we have been able to track exactly the same mutation that we found in the primary tumor, also in cell-free DNA as well as in the CTCs. The liquid biopsy platform allows scientists to study circulating tumor cells, and Dr. Luca Qualiata is using this technology to better understand breast and prostate cancer. Please welcome and join me, Dr. Luca Qualiata. Thank you for joining me, Doctor. Hi. So you do use the liquid biopsy platform heavily in your research? The field is really requiring us to go in that direction. We are actually uh, realizing that the tumors are extremely heterogeneous. And so by simply looking at the primary tumor, it might actually be not enough to, uh, to, to, to get the whole picture of the mutation landscape, which is right. in the primary tumor. We believe, the field is strongly believing that liquid biopsy either looking at cell-free DNA or CDCs uh, can be of great beneficial. This is now something which is acquired in the field, and that's why I think it's very important to look at both uh, cell-free DNA as well as CDC. There might be some tumors which are more prone to, to release more uh, mm -hmm. cell-free DNA, some others which are more prone to release more CDCs. Mm -hmm. There's no clear understanding of why, but certainly one of the things which is popping up in the field is the fact that the more vascularized is the tumor, the higher is the chances that you will find some cell-free DNA or CDCs into the bloodstream. And this is because, of course, the more vessels are there, the more are the possibility that uh, uh, these two components will be released Absolutely. into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. We normally start from a 10 ml of blood samples and then uh, taking advantage of the um, kit that is provided uh, us by the Simvenio, we can actually stabilize this 10 ml of blood up to 96 hours, which is making it very convenient because we can pile up the samples, we can take time to actually assess that everything is fine, and then eventually starting the extraction of white blood cells, cell-free DNA, as well as CDC from the very same samples. Wow, so you're able to collect all those different cell types from one sample. Exactly. That's, that's, amazing. that's very convenient, I would say. And so what's, what's the next step then? So after you collected the samples, and as I said, this is uh, stabilized for up to 96 hours, mm -hmm. you basically ran the samples into the Simvenio platform, which is fully automated system, so it's very convenient to be used. And basically the, the uh, machine is afterwards extracting white blood cells and CTCs. Mm -hmm. And in parallel, you can also get the cell-free DNA by using the uh, Minema kit, um, again from, from Tam Fisher this time. And uh, the, the procedure afterwards basically will go on by using the Ampliset. So we will generate library with the material that we are extracting using this invention platform. And eventually we will perform our sequencing. After the first line of sequencing using um, uh, the SB5, as I said, we found in a very low allelic frequency with mm -hmm. the digital PCR. I have to say that we have been able to track exactly the same mutation that we found in the primary tumor also in cell-free DNA as well as in the CTCs. In general, when we're starting from 10 ml of blood and we uh, will get then around 5 ml of plasma, we are able to get, in terms of cell-free DNA using the Minamax uh, kit, uh, we'll get roughly between 20 and 30 nanogram of DNA, which is quite a lot and which is certainly enough to perform all the uh, NGS downstream processes to mm -hmm. generate your library and sequence them. Mm -hmm. And for the CTCs, normally it depends on the kind of tumor. And still with rare. these very few cells, we are able to extract actually DNA. It goes straight away. It's not really an extraction. Basically, you use these cells and you perform your library and get the result. I mean, you get CTCs. What other types of DNA can you collect? I think another very important thing is that with the Simvenio platform, we can also get uh, white blood cells. And this is important because when we're looking at specific mutation, we want to make sure that these mutations are not somatic or mm -hmm. are somatic or are germline or non-germline mutations. Right. This is a very important information for the study. You need to know which kind of mutation you're looking at. And the only way you can know it is by having the kind of control cells, which right. in this case would be the white blood cells. So we get white blood cells, which would be our control cells. We get CTCs, we get cell-free DNA. Exactly. We also get germline and somatic information about exactly. germline and somatic mutation. And all with the same 10 ml of blood. That, that, that must be really helpful and powerful for, for your research. I believe it's going to be absolutely a breakthrough. In the next year, there's going to be quite a lot of work which needs to be done in this part of the 
this research field in oncology. Certainly the widespread introduction of NGS uh, is, a, is a major um, benefit for the studying of the CDCs as well as cell-free DNA. Mm -hmm. Without NGS there's basically no possibility to studying these um, either cells or uh, tumor um, DNA. And this is simply because Sanger it's not sensitive enough uh, to go down to the allelic frequency that you will normally detect mm. by looking at either cell-free DNA or CDCs. NGS has really enabled the field to really track the mutation that we want to track in these kind of samples. Dr. Pagliotta, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for helping me understand you know, just CTCs and cell-free DNA and their importance in understanding and studying cancer. I really appreciate your time. It was my great pleasure. Thank you.